One. One, two. Check me out right here, yo. What's going on? Mike Jackson, back with another episode of Fighters Talk. Uh, today I'm here at Paradigm Training Center in Houston, Texas, with none other than Brian Melanson. Did I say that correctly? That's right. That's right. Man, you'd be surprised how many people mess this man's name up. I've seen it. Melanson, Melancon, everything on the cage door. The, the worst was Melankin. Mel <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. Man, it, it's crazy because I know I talked to Reagan a little bit. And uh, he's just, you know, that Cajun. Yeah, that Cajun Reagan knows, back. yeah. See, me and Reagan, we go back. You know, every time I hear your name, Melanson, I think of uh, some of Reagan's famous pasta I don't oh, know yeah. if you ever tried that. No, I haven't yet. Man, it is great, man. Uh, you probably don't want to try it anytime. No, fights, uh, not in the next couple weeks. Nah. Sure. <laughs> you put some weight on. Yeah. Uh, anyway, man, I uh, know you got a big fight coming up, but uh, a lot of people don't really know about Brian. Yeah. So, like, what, what's your background? Like, you know, how'd you get started in the sport? Started in the sport, man. I had, uh, when I was 12 years old, I had seen the UFC live on pay per view. UFC 3. It was Chemo versus Hoist. Oh, and, and never then, Man, that fight made me want to do it, you know, and uh, I, I always wanted to, but I'm from a little town called Groves, right next to Port Arthur. There was nowhere to train, nowhere to even box. I was always busy playing baseball and, you know, weightlifting, doing other things. And so I never really trained. And then uh, when I was at UTMB in Galveston, uh, I had some injuries from weightlifting, couldn't do it anymore, was sitting around getting all fat and stuff and <laughs> had to do something. But I hated running. I've always hated running. So I just decided I was going to buy some instructionals, teach me and my friends for you know, a workout basically, and uh, did that for a few months. Uh, joined Metro, did a grappling tournament two weeks later, won, did another one, won again, and it just kind of snowballed from there. And then so started doing MMA after that. Got powerlifting. How? Powerlifting, yeah. Man, I, I couldn't see you in powerlifting. Then. Yeah, well, you didn't, you didn't know me back then. <laughs> I was a little. Little bowling ball back then, uh, like uh, that first grappling tournament, I actually had to cut 10 pounds to make the 209 limit so oh, I could make the heavyweight. So you were a big boy back yeah, in the day. Yeah, I was, I was stout back in the day. I was, like I said, 220 and, and walking around, and all, all I did was eat and lift. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I, that, that's my weakness is eating. No, I love uh, to. Man, it, weight cuts sometimes are pretty hard. Yeah. It's, 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 like I said, Reagan. Pasta life, man. It just puts on some weight. <laughs> I'm feeling that now, coming up. So I understand. So, uh, what do you do outside of training? You know, work or training yeah? Uh, I'm a I'm a physical therapist. Um, I was running a clinic over here in the medical center, an outpatient clinic. Uh, but here recently, after the fight with uh, with Adam, I decided to take some time off and kind of focus just on training. Uh, so I'm, I'm still working as a physical therapist. I'm seeing home health patients going in, the ones that are homebound that can't get to the clinics and okay. stuff like that and, uh, and seeing them. And then, you know, it's allowing me a little more flexibility with my schedule to train twice a day and stuff like now, that. Now, have you ever been in a fight and you hurt somebody so bad and offered them? A little bit of service. <laughs> no, that's the that's the common joke. Is like afterward, go ahead and give my card. Give for my card, but, man. Uh, but no, no, I don't. I don't think that they would take too kindly to that. So. Well, yeah, I understand. Um, the fight you have coming up, it seems like uh, this is the third one in a row. You you've taken some big fights. Yeah. Uh, going back to when you fought Adam Schiller in Bellator, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which was. Man, yeah, that was crazy, a hell of a fight. Man. <laughs> now, I watched that several times. I don't really watch fights over again yeah. after I've seen them, yeah. but I watched that one over and yeah. over and over. It's worth it. Trust me, I've oh, seen it too. I've man, seen it and, you know, I know you were a little injured in that one, but yeah, but you know, you, it, you still put on the show. <laughs> it, was, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. You know, he's a tough kid. Oh, definitely. Uh, and then after that, you fought. Uh, Dream, <coughs> WEC vet, yeah. Todd Moore, yeah. Legacy. Yeah. Uh, how was that, man? Man, I, I, I just, those are the, the type of fights that I like, you know. I, being as I have a background, have a good job, you know, as a physical therapist, you know. If, so for me, I don't really need to do, you know, MMA for the money to, to earn a paycheck and stuff. So, you know, when I got into it, it was like I want to I want to fight the best people I can and, and climb the ladder as fast as I can. And, you know, everybody has one dream, essentially, is to get in the UFC. Right. So that's, you know, give me the fights that I can get to get there, and that's what I want. And everybody, you know, knows Todd is one of the best around and, and stuff. So, 
you know, that's that's the fights that, that I want to take. I definitely agree with that, man. That's everybody's dream is to one day make it to the big show. That's it. To, to oh, we can chill with Uncle Dana <laughs> there in the UFC. Get that fight of the night bonus oh. up there. <laughs> Number one, uh, UFC 100, $100,000 bonus. Yeah, I could pay man. back some of my student loans oh, on that. Pay more than that. <laughs> um, third fight's coming up. You're fighting Junior Asunsa. Yep. Uh, He's a UFC vet, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe he's fought three times in the UFC, three times. and he's fought four opponents who were either in the UFC or been there. Yeah. Um, how do you prepare for something like that? Um, my, you know, I, my style. I don't really like to focus on just what one opponent does. You know, I, I constantly, you know, try to evolve and, and get my skill up to par and stuff like that. So that's I'm I'm constantly working on kind of what I do. And then I'll look at an opponent and see what, you know, they like to do and kind of sprinkle that in, so to speak, you know. So I'll focus on, you know, some drills that are specific to the opponent that, that they'll like to do and things to look out for and so that I'll train it. And it'll be become repetitious so that in the fight, you don't know, have to think about it. It'll just, you know, I'll see it and, and do it. So. Okay, I understand. I understand that. Uh, a recent interview uh, Junior had with the, uh, with the media, uh, he said that he doesn't watch tapes on any of his fighters. Right. Roughly, he says sometime he'll watch maybe the day of weigh-in or yeah. something like that. Um, yeah. Do you watch film at all of your opponents? I watch some, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see some, and then I'll have some of my, my trainer partners, whoever's going to be cornering me, <clears throat> will watch some too. And so, you know, they'll see something that, you know, that they may do, a flaw that they may make, or that something that that's their go-to move to look out for it. And then we'll work some of that in the training so that, you know, so that I'll have that. But I, it's not like I sit there and watch every fight I can right. find and, <laughs> over, you know, overanalyze it because, you know, it, it, it's not going to work that way. Yeah, you so. definitely can't overanalyze, man. Yeah. Uh, I know some people who, who tend to do that and they get caught up in one particular thing. And yeah. They, they just deviate away from their right. game plan. And, and if uh, a lot of the more intelligent fighters, you know, see what their weaknesses are on the videos and so they're going to use that to their advantage so you know you got somebody that's studying oh he does this every time and then right. he knows that he does that he's going to switch it you know? exactly so, I definitely you don't want to get into that game of guessing uh, so. no no not at all um he said you know uh, another thing like i said um he doesn't really feel pressure yeah he's been to the big show um and my question for you do you think it's more pressure to fight here at home or more pressure on him trying to get back to the UFC? I would think it would be more on him, you know, because, you know, I've, I've fought in Houston before. I have a, I have a large family and a, a fan base that comes out to, to check it out and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm not really, I don't really put any pressure on myself. They're there to support me either way. So, you know, it, it's for me, it's, it's just a fight. It's just another challenge for him. He's been in the UFC. He's trying to get back to the UFC. You know, people expect him to win, so that's that's more pressure on him, kind of thing. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Um, they have dubbed this the super fight. Yeah. Of legacy. Yeah. Uh, do you have any goals or anything after this super fight, regardless of the outcome? Uh, regardless, the number one goal is still UFC. So okay. you know, this is a UFC veteran, you know, and and uh, a good showing here. Puts me one notch closer to that, and you know the next fight, I'm I'm gonna sit down with my my manager Mickey Doberly and, and say, hey, you know, all right, what's next? What, what do I need to do to climb the ladder? Uh, but do you think it's just this only putting you one notch? I mean, I, look at the top more. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they didn't. No one. No one expected. This. Expected that. Yeah, yeah. And let's not even say no one expected you to win. No one expected you to win in such. Just vicious fashion yeah. that you did. Because he'd never been TKO'd before, you know? I mean, that, let's not even say not TKO. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that was impressive. Yeah. I, I was sitting front row, yeah. and I, I just looked in, in disbelief of yeah. where that, I mean, because I heard how strong you are, the power you have. But and that was quick. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I was, I, like I said, I, yeah. I watched that video a couple of times. Yeah. I was sitting there, you know, mother of the camera, yeah. doing my thing out there. 
That's the thing, and you know, I, I, I learned when I first started, you know, I had a, a pretty good ground game that was kind of my go-to, and I, I really didn't have any stand-up other than get punched in the face and try to swing <laughs> wild back, but, uh, you know, after I started developing a lot more skill setting things up and stuff like that, I started learning, you know, when I, when I you know, do connect with people, it, you know, it does, it does rock them, it does hurt them, so. I'm going to have to come, I like taking punches sometimes, I'm going to have to come in here and, hey. and let you punch me a little bit. To Monday, see Wednesday, and Friday, we <laughs> I'm going to have to come back to Houston, man, for come, a little bit. Come on over. Come Good deal. Well, man, I appreciate you for having me today in this, uh, no problem, in my man. second episode, more to come, of course. Yeah. Uh, anybody you want to thank? Uh, yeah, all the guys here at uh, Paradigm, you know, my training partners, uh, you know, we we have a strong team. We've been together through thick and thin. We, you know, we beat the crap out of each other all the time. So, you know, <laughs> nothing makes you closer than that. And then uh, thank God for, you know, all of the, the blessings I've been given, allow me to do whatever, and then, uh, you know, cross and pass with these people. So, you know, other than that, that's it. Cool, cool, man. Well, make sure y'all check it out. Houston, Texas. Legacy Fighting Championships, November 5th at the Arena Theater. Super fight. Super fight. Brian Malonsaw and Junior Sunsau. It's going to be good. All right.